will now begin the 11th lecture on the book of Hebrews. The title of chapter 11 is Faith. First, the outcome of faith, verses 1 through 3. Second, proof of faith, verses 4 through 12. Third, the reality of faith, verses 13 through 16. Fourth, steps of faith, verses 17 through 31. Fifth, the power of faith, verses 32 through 40. Verse 1, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure that God will accomplish everything that he promised us in Christ. Faith is grace that binds the believer with the things he looks upon. We studied up until chapter 10 in our previous lectures. In those lectures, we saw that believers endured sufferings. The reason was they looked upon the eternal inheritance in heaven. They advanced while persevering. They did this because they knew that they would face the coming Lord and stand before the glorious Lord. We must go forward with faith for this. In chapter 11, it speaks of the patience of those who endured with faith in the Old Testament times before they received God's promise. In other words, it means that only those who endure with faith to the end can persevere and submit to God's will. They can participate in the glory promised by the gospel. It says in verse 1, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is believing in the word of God. We cannot see what will happen in the future. For example, we have not been to heaven. Yet, through faith, it will become a reality to us. Though we have not yet been to heaven, it will become certain through faith. We do not have to visit heaven right now. By faith, heaven becomes real and visible to us. Now, let's say there is a telescope and with it, we can look at things that are far away. The telescope of the world shows us worldly things. It cannot show us heavenly things. However, the telescope of faith shows us things outside the five senses. It reveals things that belong to God through the light of testimony and power. We look upon the future with hope. Therefore, it is necessary that we examine ourselves if we claim we believe. If we believe that sin is evil, we must hate sin. If we believe that we will stand before Christ on Judgment Day, we must keep that in mind as we live. If we believe that this world is empty, we will not be led away by this world. If we believe that God provides us with things we need, we will no longer 
fear tomorrow. If we believe that prayer is the means in which we can grow in grace, we will pray more diligently in the private rooms. If we believe in Christ's second coming, we will prepare for that day. These types of faith will be recognized by God. Verse 2 says, This is what the ancients were commended for. The forefathers testified to God's promise with faith. Verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Faith makes us believe in things that are not believable. This world that we live in was formed at God's command. Verse 4 speaks of the faith of Abel. By faith, Abel offered a sacrifice to God. He was the first to offer a sacrifice in the Bible. His faith was precious. He did not have anyone to look up to, nor did he have a role model or anyone who taught him. He did not know through feelings. He acted with faith. In Romans chapter 10 verse 17, it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. There was a reason why Abel offered a sacrifice to God with faith. After Adam sinned, God clothed Adam and Eve with garments of skin. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21 After they sinned, they tried to cover their bodies with fig tree leaves, but it was of no use. Sin can only be resolved by the redemption of Christ. Hence, Abel offered the firstborn of his flock and oil just as he learned from Adam. What is the meaning of Abel's sacrifice of the firstborn of his flock? It means that just as that lamb died for his sins, Christ would come to atone for our sins in the future. Therefore, people must acknowledge that they are sinners. It was right for Adam to be banished from the Garden of Eden, and God's punishment was just. Abel looked upon the death of the coming Christ and he saw that sinners would be accepted by God in Christ. A life of faith begins from the offering of a lamb. Repentance begins with the recognition of sin. We must know that we are sinful to look upon our Savior and accept Christ. However, Cain offered some of the fruits of the soil. This refers to grains. Because Cain offered a sacrifice to God, he did not he did acknowledge the existence of God. However, his sin was that he did not offer a sacrifice according to God's method. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22b, it says, And without the shedding of blood, 
there is no forgiveness. Yet Cain offered a bloodless offering. He gave an offering of the fruit of the earth. He ignored God's word in Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 22, God clothed Adam and Eve with garments of skin. Worshipping God without obedience to God's will is an act of hypocrisy. Cain served God in his own way with unbelief, disobedience, and with religious hypocrisy. He worshipped God with his lips, but his heart was far from God. However, Abel offered his sacrifice with faith. Faith is obedience to God's word of promise. Disobedience to God's word is not faith. The people of faith who went before us all believed in God's word. Moreover, Abel offered his sacrifice voluntarily. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 12 Our God does not delight in forced offerings, but wants us to give offerings voluntarily. There is thankfulness, joy, and peace in a voluntary heart. However, there are complaints and annoyances in forced hearts. The devil tries to lead us away from God's word so that we would not live by faith. Abel offered a sacrifice with faith and was called righteous. There is only one thing of which we can be acknowledged before God and that is Christ's perfect sacrifice. Proof of righteousness is faith. Abel died, but he still speaks by faith. What does this mean? It means that through his obedience in faith, he preached to us about what is most important. Next, we see the faith of Enoch, verses 5 through 6. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. Enoch walked with God. To walk with God means to submit our lives to God, receive God's reign, and live for God. Enoch lived this way for 300 years. He ascended into heaven while he lived in that way. Now, just as Enoch's ascension was the supernatural work of God, our regeneration, repentance, and faith are supernatural works of God as well. When Enoch was 65 years old, he gave birth to Methuselah, and he walked with God for 300 years. He lived 3,300 years before Jesus came, and he lived 5,300 years from today. Enoch lived a life pleasing to God. We must look at Enoch and ask ourselves, why is our faith so weak? Why can't we cut off the things of the world?
Our weak faith is proof that we do not work to please God. Enoch believed in the word of God. In chapter 11, it says, By faith at the beginning of verses before the names of people. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Faith is strong if it is from the word of God. Because Enoch did not experience death, it is proof that he believed in God's word. Yet, this is not clearly written in the Bible. Because Enoch received God's word, he held on to it and believed in God's unchanging word after 100, 200, and 300 years. Life was not that easy in the times of Enoch. In the book of Jude, it says in verse 14, Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men. Verse 15 says, To judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. There were some ungodly occurrences in the times of Enoch. Still, Enoch kept his faith as he gave birth to his offspring. Thus, we can see that the times of Enoch were not peaceful times. There were many ungodly people at the time. Enoch had children and kept his faith. He kept his faith while he lived a social and family-centered life. Enoch approached God. In verse 6, it says, anyone who comes to him. Those who go to God refer to those who go before God and communicate with him in spirit and in heart. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13, Romans chapter 8 verse 8. It says, those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. It says, those controlled by the sinful nature are those who have not been born again. However, Enoch pleased God, believed in his word, and approached God with faith. Verse 7 is about the faith of Noah. He was saved from the judgment of flood by building an ark. If he had not built the ark, he would not have been saved. There is one question that can be raised here. We know that when we say we are saved by faith, we are saved by God's grace. We are not saved by our deeds. However, the building of the ark in the text is an emphasis of the need to act. We saw this in chapter 10 as well. Just because we are saved by faith, it does not mean that we must stay put. We discussed many phrases used in chapter 10. 
hold tight, do not step back. You must encounter many sufferings to enter the kingdom of heaven. Persevere. We learn through these passages that man is truly saved by faith. He must believe in God's promise and continually walk down the road of obedience. Noah was warned of things not yet seen. He was warned of something that would take place 120 years later. Also, with his physical condition, it was not easy to build an ark. There was no heavy rain, so he may have doubted that a flood would come to destroy all humanity. The flood would also come 120 years later. Noah would have been ridiculed if he built the ark and Noah did not even know how to make an ark. Furthermore, he could have questioned whether the huge ark could float or not. The ark had no sail, pole, or anchor. It had no steering gear. It also would have been extremely difficult to live in the ark. However, Noah obeyed God's word. What is the difference between a believer and an unbeliever? A believer obeys God's word as it is, and an unbeliever lives according to his sinful nature. According to 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, a man who does not follow the commandments, even though he says he loves God, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. However, a saved man obeys God's commands. True believers walk down the road of obedience. Noah feared God and he believed. Then he built the ark. If man truly believes, obedience will naturally follow. Here it shows the difference between the book of Romans and James. Romans says that we are saved by faith, and James says that those with such faith will naturally obey. Therefore, faith without obedience is dead faith. Just as a person is dead when his soul departs, a person who does not obey God's word while claiming to believe in God has dead faith. Dead faith cannot receive salvation. That is what James chapter 2 speaks of. We are not saved by keeping the law, but by believing that Jesus Christ is Savior. One who is saved is born again, and he lives a life of obedience to God's Word. He follows God's Word. God is his Lord, even if humanly thoughts say otherwise. He knows that the works of the Lord are good and he believes in the Almighty God and obeys God. This is what it means to build the ark. There is a difference between the book of Romans 
and the book of James. However, salvation by faith and becoming righteous by deeds is not a separate truth but is one. Romans emphasizes salvation by faith and James emphasizes that the saved will obey. Noah saved his household through such obedience. The eight members of his family were all saved. Yet they were not saved by Noah's faith, but were saved by their individual faith. One cannot be saved by another person's faith. We are saved by our personal faith. Thus it says, by his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. The word righteousness refers to justification. One is declared righteous by faith and he receives the right to be called righteous. With verse 8, let's think about the faith of Abraham. By faith, Abraham obediently went to the promised land when he was called to go. That land was the land of Canaan. When Abraham first went there, he did not know it was the land of Canaan. Canaan is a symbol of heaven and God spoke to Abraham in this way. Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. At that time, Abraham was about 75 years old, and he was soon to be 80 years old. He did not know where to go. He had to abandon his riches and leave his home. He had to cut off his family and leave a comfortable life. Physically, it was not a delightful command. Before we believed in Jesus, we were of this world. However, when God called Abraham, he commanded Abraham to leave his country, his people, and his father's household. This means that we must leave the old lifestyle. God commands us, the descendants of Abraham, to leave this world and leave sin. To follow the Lord is to deny oneself. It is the way of carrying the cross. When God calls, he calls in two ways. There is an external calling and an internal calling. The external calling says, for many are invited. The internal calling says, but few are chosen. Even today, a lot of people hear the gospel but only a few truly believe. Those who believe are those who have been called internally. When Abraham obeyed and went, he did not know where he was going. Still, he obeyed God's word. Obedience to God's word comes from love for God and it is to follow God's power. Let's think about this. 
If a stranger came and told you to follow him, would you follow him? Abraham believed in God's word and followed God. He was not anxious about the future, and he simply followed God's guidance. Let's think about this. Regarding the problem of tithes, do we not give tithes to God because we believe it is a loss to us? Why would we not close our businesses on Sundays to earn more money? Abraham obeyed God. God requires us to obey. Our obedience as saved believers glorifies God. Obedience testifies that the grace of God is enough. It shows that we are children of God, and it keeps us from being destroyed. Anyone who has the faith of Abraham lives with such faith. Only those who have the faith of Abraham will participate in the inheritance of heaven. In verse nine. It says that Abraham lived in tents. This means that he lived like a stranger, as someone who would not live on this earth forever. Abraham looked upon heaven, while he lived as one who would temporarily live in this world. It was not because Abraham was poor. In Genesis chapter thirteen, verse two, it says that he was wealthy in silver and gold. To live like a stranger is to not have an attachment to this earth. Abraham lived by faith while he held on. To the promise of God, his heart was in spiritual things rather than earthly things. He endured and lived with hope. Because Abraham left when he was seventy-five years old, and because he gave birth to Isaac when he was one hundred years old. About twenty-five years had passed. Because Isaac gave birth to Jacob when he was sixty, about eighty-five years had passed since then. Hence, Abraham lived in tents for about one hundred years. In verses eleven through twelve. It speaks of Sarah's faith. It says, "And Sarah herself was barren." Sarah was in a situation where it was hard to keep her faith. She was old. She was barren. She had stopped menstruating. It means that she could not have children. She was about ninety years old. It is simply impossible. That is why Sarah laughed a bit at first. Yet here it says by faith, which means that Sarah believed in God's word. She believed that God is faithful. Thus it says. And so, from one man, and he was as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore.
Therefore, we must not be detained in our weaknesses. Our faith is not about looking at ourselves, but it is about looking to God. We gain strength and power when we rely on God. When we are bound by thoughts of the flesh, things seem impossible to achieve and things seem unstable. Sarah believed and obeyed with faith, and hence she gained strength to become pregnant by the power of God. Verse 13 tells us that all these people were still living by faith when they died. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah never committed apostasy. They had confidence of the glory of heaven and its inheritance. In order for us to die by faith, we must live by faith. Though they did not receive the fulfillment of the promise, they looked at it from afar. This promise is about Christ. They looked to the Messiah from afar. Abraham looked upon the faint light from afar 2,000 years before Jesus came. Moses, 1,500 years before, David, 1,000 years before, and Isaiah, 700 years before. They looked upon Christ, and they lived as aliens and strangers in the land. They lived in this way because they looked upon their country. They looked upon their country which means that they threw away the things of the world and looked for heaven. We must think of our country, become worthy, and strive to have acceptable characters. We must strive to live in such ways and strive to reach that place. Verse 15 if they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. This means that their hearts were not on earthly things. They knew the way to return home. They had wealth and time. They were healthy enough to go back. In the same way, we always have the chance to return to the world. However, Abraham did not return. He looked to God and lived with heavenly hope. That is because we have a father. He looked upon the Lord. Verse 17 is also a well-known verse. Abraham offered Isaac to God. God tested Abraham's obedience. God wanted to know if Abraham loved Isaac more than God. Regarding Isaac, God said that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. However, if that son died, how would that promise be fulfilled? Still, Abraham believed that even if Isaac was killed, God would bring Isaac to life and fulfill his promise. Hence, 
Abraham obeyed with faith. Faith makes us make right judgments, gets rid of our doubts, and makes our every thought submit to Christ. Faith makes us look upon the future. Thus, Abraham's faith was acknowledged before God. Romans chapter four, verses seventeen through twenty-four. Chapter four, verses seventeen through twenty-four. We must glorify God with faith to obey as Abraham did. With this, we will conclude. The eleventh lecture on the book of Hebrews. Thank you. Hebrews. Thank you.